Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Dave Pentecostal Gospel Church. Pastor Walter, am I going too fast? Oh, Pastor Walter is um, on a little trip today, so I'm taking over for him. Um, he will be back next week. And today we are going to talk about perseverance. Perseverance today. So we're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come together again today. Father, thank you for the message that, that we received this morning. Father, I ask that you just come again, once again today, and enter into this body. Take over. Holy Spirit, fill me up, for this is your message. And, and God, I want you to have all the praise and glory, and, and I praise you for letting, praise you for using me today. In your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Okay. We are going to go out of the scriptures, Romans 5, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So like I said, today we're going to talk about perseverance, and I really like this, this passage in uh, Romans because this shows perseverance. Because perseverance is waiting, but it's how you wait. Um, and it's not always easy to wait for things in, um, in this, today's world. But if you look at the verse, it says that by faith, faith gives us the ability to wait. And when we wait, even through good times and also through tribulations, we get patience. Patience is not a quality that I carry very well. I like things to happen right now. But I'm learning. But when you, when you are patient, then you get experience. And experience leads you to hope. And hope is, makes us not ashamed because our hope comes from the Holy Spirit, which is here to guide us and to lead us. And when we rely on that, we should not have trouble persevering. But we still do. It's hard to persevere in, in the world today because the world is beating us down. Christians just seem to be under attack. Our values, our God, everything about us is, is being, um, being under attack. And what's, what's happening now means that God is now is going to start building his army. So perseverance is very, very important right now because... We are part of that army, and he needs all of us. He needs every one of us. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, if you're sick or healthy. If you are in God's army, you have a purpose. Some purposes may be bigger than others, but they're not any less important to God. Because every purpose is important to God. It is also hard to wait. I am that person. I know there are a lot of people out there that, that are like me because we live in a world where we get instant gratification all the time. I mean, I can pick up my cell phone and pretty much get whatever I want. But it's not showing me how to grow through perseverance. So one way to help manage that, help the one way I look and what I look at to help me persevere is I look at all the small blessings there are miracles, but if you look at all the day-to-day -day blessings that you have, no matter how big or small, those blessings, I believe, equal a miracle. Because some days I'm like, God, how did I even get through this day? But I do. So the small blessings could be like one day I was going to work and, all, and I was late and all the lights were green all the way through. That's a blessing. And I said, thank you, Lord. Or sometimes when I know I'm at that four-way stop right there by Gabe's in Martinsburg and there's no traffic and I can just go right through. That, like, that's a rare occasion. And there's just certain things when I pull out onto the, uh, usually I'm talking to Jennifer on the way home and, I, and I'm coming out onto 340 and you've got four lanes of traffic going at the same time. And there's just some days 
that I go and there's no cars anywhere to be seen and I say thank you Lord for that blessing or a, a small blessing could be you know you could be struggling to pay a bill and somehow money just appears or money is given to you uh, or meals being left at your doorstep I mean it can be a multitude of anything that you could think of that God's blessing you with and when you learn to see those little blessings it helps you to persevere because then you can see that God is with you every single day but what does perseverance mean? Well, I said that it's related to the word waiting, but let's go ahead and see two definitions. A worldly definition from the Oxford Dictionary, and then we're going to see what Paul calls it. Oxford Dictionary says pers that perseverance is persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving a success. So it means it could be hard, but you're going to still walk through it. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. Perseverance is being steadfast. Unmovable. You're not going to sway in God's word. You're unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. You are following what God has asked you to do. For so much as we that, you, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, God sees us persevering. And he is happy when we persevere. And the reason he's happy, because he does not guarantee that walking through our Christian walk that it's going to be easy. There's going to be hardships and obstacles. There's going to be tribulation is what the Bible calls it. Tribulation is anything that you have to wait through that is hard. So perseverance shows faith, one, faith in God. And also, God wants to see us, uh, wants to see us persevere and not give up. Romans 12, 12 says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing in instant prayer. That's the important part right there. Is you've got to pray while you're persevering. You've got to pray, and we're going to hear that a few times today. Prayer is very important. It's a very powerful tool. And what he says is to pray for strength and peace with whatever you face. Now, I, I preached this morning at a different church, and I gave this, this te my personal testimony because I wanted to demonstrate what strength and peace is. When my mother was passing, that was the hardest thing that I've ever had to do in my personal life is to walk that with my mother. And when I... I got the phone call that I was just told that she fell and broke a rib and that she was in the hospital and so I left work and I drove there thinking that I would just be helping her mend. But when I got there, she, she was not going to ever make it home. She, her, in, her or, internal organs were shutting down and she was, she was dying. And at that moment, I called my two accountability sisters and and then shortly after them, I called my pastor, and my pastor prayed with me, and we prayed for peace and understanding and strength that I could not know. And when you face this strength, and when you get this kind of strength and this kind of peace, there are no earthly words that can describe it. I can't sit here and tell you what it is and what it means. But when you get it, you know, and it is unbelievable. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. When you get that peace and strength, that is God giving us what we need to persevere. Because even in our trials or our obstacles or whatever the devil throws at us, that is part of, the, part of the process of growing spiritually. He allows these things to happen so that we can, can, can grow. He also allows these things to happen so that we can maybe shed some things in our life that we don't need anymore. He might be pruning us. I used the example this morning of tomato bushes. You know, when you're growing tomatoes, to get the best, the best fruit, you have to go down in the, between the little branches and pick out those little sucker things. I don't know what they're called technically, but they're the little... The little sprouts that come out, and I, we call them, I grew up calling them suckers, and you had to pitch those out because they would keep your fruit from growing. So sometimes your obstacles and your tribulations are to make you stronger. 
Because that's God going in and plucking out those little things that are stopping you from growing. When, you, when you're going through hardships, you must learn how to face them. That is obstacles, difficulties, trials, and tribulations. Some of the things that we are facing in the world today is COVID. COVID and illnesses seem to be running rapid right now. There's, I've, I know of some people that I really, truly love that we've lost to COVID. I know that there are some people that I love now that are, are truly, truly facing some horrible illnesses. Sometimes you may um, face a loss of a job. There are businesses closing because prices have gotten so high that people have no choice but to shut their doors. And so people are losing jobs, and I see that. I see that with my families, you know, when these children come in and the parents, the children are, you know, not acting the right way. And I contact the parents, and the parents are like, well, we've lost our job, and we're struggling, or we didn't have food. And, and thankfully, my school has resources, and, and, and they are prepared to help as many families as they can. Um, but also, there's, there's uncertainty in today's world. So we, we sometimes face uh, illnesses. COVID right now is crazy. Um, losses of jobs. But sometimes in the world today, especially this past weekend, if, you, if you're part of the news, I'm not going to get into a discussion about it. But if you watch the news, some, some big things have happened. And when you go out, sometimes you get up in the morning and you step outside, you're like, what is going to happen today? Or you turn on the news and you're like, well, what's happening today? Or who's done this? And who's done that? Who is... Who was angry at who? That we still have a huge division in our country right now. We have, we still have racism. I think on both sides happening right now, and that is that leaves the world uncertain. And what does that mean for us as Christians? Well, when we face hardships, this is what God wants us to know. There are two choices that we have when we come against anything that is difficult in our spiritual life or our personal lives. We have two choices. Our first choice is to trust in God by keeping your eyes on Him and moving forward. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And what that saying is, the Lord has a plan. Even if it's the most horrible thing that you are facing, that's alright. It is part of God's plan. He has a purpose for it. So keep going. Don't stop. The second choice you have is you can quit. You can abandon all hope that the Holy Spirit gave you. Romans 8.25 says, But if we hope for what we see not, then do, then do we with patience wait for it. So what the Bible is saying, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. The Holy Spirit is our powerful tool. He lives in here. Access Him. Access Him. Let Him help you. When you give up, you abandon hope. And when you abandon hope, then they're, you know, you're on your own. You're on your own. So that's your two choices, to keep your eyes on God. I kept my eyes on God. The, the example that I used this morning was, you know, eight years ago, I was homeless, had no job, my dog died, I was evicted, and I was as low as low could be. And for, for a little while, I gave up. I did, I gave up. But God put some people in my life. He put somebody, uh, and sometimes people are just temporary, but you know, there was one, one lady that, that she, she walked with me through that, and then God gave me uh, my two accountability people who, who pulled me through. And then I had really good friends that took us in. So at that point, I was at my lowest. And I was in what I, what I would call quicksand, in the pit. And my finger was out, and I said, God, just please pull me out. I can't do it anymore. And the point is, is I was so headstrong, and I was running from my calling. I was running from what God wanted. And he let me, he let me sink. He let me hit the bottom to where the only choice I had left was either think that I was going to go join him or he could pull me out. And I had nowhere to look but up. 
So I looked up, and eight years later, I'm standing behind the pulpit. And I, because I, I said, God, if you save me, I will do whatever you ask me to do. And I, and I'm, and I meant it. Then, after I gave all, all control to God, I got a house. I own my own home. I have a great job, making more money than I've ever made in my life. And I have a car. And I, he also granted me with additions to my family. And he's given me everything and more than what I could hope for. And he's there. And that's my next point. When you're going through the tribulations, don't forget that God is always there for you. He's always present. He's not letting you walk through darkness and he's over here saying, look at her, look at her. No, he's walking beside you. Every, everywhere you go. Psalms 46 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. You can't get any clearer than that, guys. You can't. He is your refuge and your strength. When you don't have strength to go, or you think that you don't have strength to go, then you need to start praying. You need to start praying because God's going to say, God is there. And if you don't even know what to pray for, you just say, God, hug me. Give, be my refuge. Protect me. Carry me through. If you can't even carry yourself, let God carry you through. Pray for that peace and understanding that I was talking about earlier. And I'm telling you, it is unbelievable. I would have never been able to make it through what I did when my mother passed away if it hadn't been for that peace and understanding. Because I had to make terrible I had to make terrible decisions in my mind. And I had to I had to I had to choose the future and the path that my mom was walking on for her because she couldn't. And it it took that strength and that peace for me to be able to do that and some really good people who helped me from from out behind the scenes. And just remember that when you are going through your tribulations, you have a purpose. God is not done with you. Every single one of us has a purpose. Keep going. Do not stop. The devil is going to throw everything he can at you. He's going to throw, for me, he, he, he uses me against myself. He, he can cause doubt. And I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't. And I mean, and then he 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 will put obstacles. I I I you know my my calling is to be an ordained minister, but it seems like every time I turn around, I'm knocked down. But here I am. The Holy Spirit is using me. God is using me to, to deliver His words, and I'm not stopping. The devil can knock me down, the earth can knock me down, or man can knock me down as many times as they want. But I will get back up, and if I can't get up, I have two wet ladies that are going to pick me up from behind, and they're going to set me on my feet and tell me to keep going. You have a purpose. Don't stop. Keep going no matter how hard it is. Here's what God gave us, Jesus. Jesus died to give us the Holy Spirit. He, why did He give us the Holy Spirit? He gave us the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is our guide in this world. If you don't know, pray and say, Holy Spirit, what am I going to do about this situation? Holy Spirit, where do I go from here? Holy Spirit, how am I going to feed my children today? Where, where is the next job going to come? And sometimes you're going to have to wait. That's when you even pray harder. God. Please give me the patience to wait. I pray that a lot. And, 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 and people, I know somebody will, will get tickled because they know patience is very hard for me. Patience is very, very hard for me. But the Holy Spirit gives me strength during the tribulations. But also, He rejoices with me when I do have those victories. When I got that house, I was happy. And my, my daughter walked in and she said, Mom, this feels like home. At that very moment, I knew I was buying that house and the Holy Spirit and, and was celebrating right beside me. Probably troves of angels around me that I couldn't even see. Because I said, God, if you give me a house with uh, three bedrooms, I will, I will foster. Well, God, uh, the Holy Spirit heard. 
he celebrated, and then I did foster, and now I have a son, because I adopted from that fostering. And the day that that happened, the Holy Spirit was rejoicing with me. But as I always say in every sermon, you must be prepared. God is always present, but you have your job too. Read your Bible. There's no tribulation, no obstacle, no difficult time that is not already in that book. Those pages are your guide to every situation you face. And if you don't think it is, go to your Bible and say, God, I'm facing this and I don't know what to do and I'm going to open my Bible, guide me to where I need to be and I'm telling you He does. I've experienced it and He does. It, it just blows my mind every time and I'll come right to a passage. Sometimes I'll have to read a few, a few different places, but He always brings me my answer. To be prepared when God, is, when God is walking beside you, you need to have a relationship with Him. If you don't have a relationship with God, you can't hear when He's saying, do this. Or when He whispers in your mouth, don't go there. Or stay away from that. Or go this direction. Take this job. You can't hear Him if you don't have a relationship with Him. <coughs> he is in your heart. Access it. Open it. You have the greatest power on this earth right here inside your chest. Remember to be prepared. Remember that your heavenly rewards outweigh any of your earthly trials. I am that person who will say, well, why do they get the big house? Why do they get to do that and I don't get to do that? Or why are they getting, seems like they're getting blessed and I'm doing something the same way and I'm not getting blessed? That's what this is about. Here's what Psalms says. Psalms 37, 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. you got to put God first. Put God first in tribulations. And that's hard to do. Because when you're in a tribulation, then you, you get, I get, like me, myself, I get self-absorbed. I'm like, I want to do poor me pity parties. And God is saying here, Always delight in the Lord no matter how, excuse me, how bad you feel. Because He's there with you. And He's going to give you what you need. And sometimes you're going to have to wait. I, have to, I had to wait three years to get my house. I have a friend that's waiting for a home now. I have a lot of friends waiting for some very big important things. But we have to wait. But He also says in the Bible that what truly matters is what you get when you get to heaven because there's sometimes that you don't get your reward on the earth you get it when you go to heaven and that's what he says your heavenly rewards outweigh your earthly ones so don't compare yourself to the Joneses don't compare yourself to the friend that has the five hundred thousand dollar home and you're living in a, in a, in a little one-story house don't compare yourself to others because what God has for you is what's best for you. When you are persevering, here's the trick. Perseverance involves genuine commitment. What does that mean? That means you are 100% focused on God. That you are not going to quit. That you are, you are leaning towards God instead of leaning towards your own understanding. And you're saying, God, help me get through this. God, I'm here with you. I want a relationship with you. Pray. Talk to him. Allow him to help you. And you have to have patience, no matter how difficult the assignment might be. You have to have patience. That is very hard for me, I have to admit. But I'm learning. I'm learning. Because he's made me wait. He made me wait three years for my house. I waited a couple of years for my job. There's so many things that I've had to wait for, but I'm stronger today because of that patience that I was taught. People must set their hearts and minds on accomplishing whatever God has called them to do. If God called you to do a food ministry, stick to it. You might be on the street passing out food and there might not be anybody there. Or there might just be one person go by that takes the food. But stick with it. You still go out there. Because God has a purpose. You have a preaching ministry, 
Even when the devil tries to knock you down and stop you, keep going. That's my, that's my personal testimony is I have to keep going. No matter what happens, I have to keep going. God makes you sick, believe that he's going to heal you. And don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going. You have to set your mind and believe that God is going to do it, no matter how long you have to wait. And there's some people that have to wait years. You know, you might be praying for your children. And your child may be an addict or in a terrible situation or missing, for that matter. You keep praying, don't you dare cease. You keep praying because God hears your prayers every single time. And I'm going to end with this verse because I really, really like it. Luke 11, 9 through 10. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that find, seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it will be opened. Here's what I love about this verse. It doesn't say you sit down and expect it. You have to do something. Seek it. That's all he's asking. Seek it. And when you find what you when you find what you want, you ask for it. God wants us to be happy. And then once you once you ask for it, then you got another action you have to do. You have to knock. So what that knock means is you have to go get it. You can't sit back in your chair and expect God to, to, to hand deliver it like a waitress or a waiter. You, you have to work for it too. So sometimes perseverance makes us grow because we have to do something in return. And that's about perseverance. Is you've got to keep going. You do not stop. Short but sweet little sermon today. So we're going to go ahead and close. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity today. Father, thank you for the growth that I've had. Thank you for the experience that I have gained today. Father, please be with each and every person in this room as they go throughout their week. Father, help them to not give up when hard times come, that they will look to you and say, God, we can get through this. Let's go. Because that's what you ask us to do. Father, I pray that we that we shine our light brighter in this world because part of per perseverance is walking through times that are uncertain, Father, and that are difficult. Father, right now is a time where we need to save as many souls as we can. Father, be the light so people will say, what do you have that I don't have? I need this because the world is just so busy at tearing everybody down and tearing everything apart. So, Father, just be with us. And, Father, thank you for using my body as your vessel to deliver this words. Bless each and every person that heard, here, and online. In your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right.